Well, here we are leaving the Locksaw River, little campsite. Always leave it better than you found it, so we left them a little extra wood. Everything's kind of cleaned up. We got, got Jack backing me out here. And we're going to head down towards Darby. Got some nice little campgrounds here on the Locksaw. This is just beginning of day two. Um, Got my trusty companion here. She's a little more awake right now, but she slept well through the night. Slept harder than I did. I thought I heard some things wandering around, and I almost woke her up to let her know if there was something out there or not. So she's not much of a watchdog uh, when she's sleeping anyway. So anyway, we're uh, starting day two. Uh, just leaving camp and that little camping area down here in the Locksaw. About a mile from the camp, or from the... Uh, uh, ranger station and so we'll see how things go today looks like a little better day well, the road uh, from the Locksaw River where you cross the Locksaw uh, probably back towards Grangeville for about 10 miles is really really in good shape um, they've just bladed it and now uh, you know we're going east from the Locksaw where we camped there at the Locksaw and this road too is really, I mean, this is just a normal gravel road uh, like rural Idaho, all rural Idaho has. So um, this this is not bad at all so far. Now, on the other side of that 10 miles going back towards Grangeville, there was some challenging spots and there was some down trees, as you saw yesterday, that we had to take care of. Um, but the weather is much better today. You can actually see uh, the tops of some of the hills. We couldn't see more than probably 200 yards yesterday during that rainstorm actually less than that when it started hailing it was pretty bad um, but uh, this road right now um, like I say is really in pretty good shape so uh, I wouldn't have any problem bringing a bike over here at all now we're at uh, the Magruder Ranger Station we're gonna go fill Jack's water bucket up So we got enough water. You can never, never want to run short of palatable water, potable water. Um, so I've got a couple gallons left. We had to use some on Jack's radiator when we went to the top of Burnt Knob. In fact, we finished up Jack's, Jack's jug there. So we'll just refill it. This is uh, supposed to have some potable water here. The ranger station, they say, has no other services and is, is now unmanned. So um, we'll see what it looks like when we get there. Well, here we are at the Magruder Ranger Station. This is an unmanned ranger station. Um, actually, it's really taken care of pretty well. Jack's filling up with water. Looks like they got a pasture here for horses. I suspect that they, uh, when they go in to do trail maintenance, they bring in horses and crews and everything, and probably stage right out of this, out of this area here. So, nice little ranger station in the middle of nowhere. We're rolling along Deep Creek right now. Um, the road's getting dried out, so it's starting to get a little dusty, but it's not bad at all. Jack's pretty far ahead of me, so I don't have to eat much dust. Um, I'd mentioned before that we'd aired our tires down, which is really kind of, it's a good idea. Kind of takes a lot of the edge of the uh, some of these bumps off of this, these gravel and dirt roads. But one thing that's important if you're gonna do that, you gotta be prepared to air them back up again. And uh, Jack and I both carry uh, compressors, so once we get through this, before we get back on the highway, we can we can air our tires back up. But it really does make for a much more comfortable ride. Plus, uh, you get a lot better traction too when you air your tires down. Um, you probably don't get the best fuel mileage, but 
you gotta you gotta weigh the good with the bad. So anyway, it looks like this day is gonna be a little better than yesterday, um, a little drier anyway, and that's a good thing. We've seen quite a few uh, dual sport bikes up here, some ATVs, but uh, a lot of dual sport bikes, and most most of the bikers have been pretty good. I mean, they're they're not um, going too fast, and and they give uh, you know they give you warning when they're coming up behind you, because they typically go a little faster than we do. Um, met one guy this morning from Grangeville was riding his dual sport, and uh, he actually uh, dumped it on one of the roads here. On, it's it's like I say it's uh, some of the roads are a little dicey, but there's been a couple of dual sport riders that have come up behind me and just absolutely surprised me and passed me probably going 45 50 miles an hour. Um, that's you know if this were a road where everybody were going the same way and we we're in a race that's probably acceptable, but I think some of these riders don't realize that you come around a blind corner like one of these uh, at 50 miles an hour and meet someone else in the road where the road is only wide enough for one vehicle, uh, someone is going to be a winner and somebody is going to be a loser. And typically it's going to be the dual sport rider. So uh, I guess uh, if any of my dual sport riding friends uh, do watch this and decide to, to make this trip, um, just be careful when you're riding through here. This is a great ride. Uh, you shouldn't be racing through here. There's too much scenery to be seen up in here. This is this is uh, we're right in the middle of the Frank Church Wilderness here, and uh, it's just a pretty cool place. Wow, this is strange. We uh, in the middle of nowhere here. We just all at once came upon hardtop. Um, right at I think it was. Base Creek Outfitters, uh, something like that, and uh, we're still we're still in Idaho. We haven't we haven't come into Montana yet, and I have no idea why the heck this is. Uh, <laughs> this is I mean this is a pretty nice road back in here, so um, not so much wilderness right where we are right now. I guess this is kind of interesting. I suspect that this road was probably paved and put through here prior to the Frank Church becoming wilderness um, for a corridor here. This this is quite an, uh, I mean, an undertaking back here in the middle of nowhere to create a nice asphalt road. And now, as you can see by the edges, the weeds and, and everything, it's uh, it's still being maintained, but not not up to normal highway standards obviously there's a couple places where it's it's starting to lose its base and maybe slide slide down a mountain a little bit but still um, this is a pretty fine road out here when you consider making a road these days an asphalt road costs a million dollars a mile um, it, there's a couple places that were patched so the, this road is definitely being maintained I don't know if it's a uh, an Air Force road, or excuse me, a Forest Service road, or a, uh, a highway district road of somebody's, but somebody is uh, sure paying to take care of this road. They sure paid, probably Idaho citizens probably paid to put this road in. Um, we're coming up, looks like we're coming up to the uh, top of the grade here. We're headed to uh, um, the Idaho-Montana border, and so, There'll be more on that when we get there, I guess. I, it was funny. I saw a sign. I saw a sign back a little further that said "caution, rough road," and it just made me smile. It's like this is not a this is not a rough road. What well, we came over from Grangeville, that was a rough road. This is the top of the Nez Perce Pass. You probably pause this and read what it says. Well, we've come across the Magruder, Magruder Corridor. 
somewhere here. I guess we're going to be heading up towards West Fork Ranger Station. Well, we decided that uh, we're going to re- What's that? 26. We're going to re-inflate our tires since we're up here at the top of Nespers Pass. It looks like the road's all going to be paved. So, we got good sun and I figure it's just a nice place to do it. Well, we got the tires all aired up there at the Nespers Pass. and. Nice lady from Nampa, actually, that's a volunteer up here, uh, one of the Bitterroot Range volunteers. And they were helping uh, folks launch from, there's a Paradise Lake or something. Anyway, they've got a lot of rafters up here this year because they've got such uh, good water. And so they're, she's been busy doing that. Um, she said that this road is paved all the way back uh, into Montana, well, we're in Montana, but all the way back to Highway 93. So I think is what we're going to do is we're going to take Highway 93 down towards Salmon and maybe take a, a back road between Salmon and Sunbeam, um, do some camping, maybe a little fishing out there. So we'll go see what other kind of trouble we can find. Oh, and I meant to mention that the uh, the gal from Napa that was telling me about uh, uh, the road, I asked her how this road got paved. And she said that uh, before the Frank Church and the Bitterroot uh, wildernesses were were made, they uh, they built this highway so they could uh, start managing the forests and logging and and things back in that area. And so then they created the the wilderness areas. And so now instead of uh, managing the forests back there, we just uh, let the beetles eat them and and let them burn. And uh, that's unfortunate because trees are a renewable resource just like uh, your garden is if it's properly managed and and um, although we need to have wilderness and I understand that I also think that uh, we need to manage some of our forests better as well and uh, here's a great piece of infrastructure that was created to do that and now it's it's being used uh, as a gravel road would normally be used so um, not a good investment for the citizens of Montana or the citizens of Idaho, I guess. As I was driving down this road, um, I came around a corner and you can see uh, the trees out there. All of the brown trees are beetle killed. Um, that, no, that's not uh, fall foliage. Those are actually trees that have been killed by beetles and that will just continue to happen until that entire forest is dead and probably will burn um, because we can't go in and pull those beetle kill trees out. So unfortunately we've we've regulated ourselves into a corner where we can't properly manage a lot of this forest um, which is sad uh, and we we need to figure out some way to to manage this invasive beetle as well. Well that was interesting our pavement just ended. Um, we're probably Oh, five, ten miles from the uh, uh, Nez Perce Pass, and a uh, little sign came up and said pavement ends. So I guess it's not paved all the way to Highway 93. We'll figure out just how far it is, but this is still a pretty good road. I mean, I'm traveling about 40 miles an hour, um, so it's a, it's still a pretty good road. And then we just passed a campground with a lot of uh, um, fifth wheel trailers and stuff, so. There's a, it, I mean, there's a lot of traffic that goes on this road. It's well maintained, and uh, I think that if a person wanted to get a flavor and experience of the uh, Magruder Corridor, um, you could do so in a in a regular sedan, a regular car um, from the Montana side, and make it well past the uh, Nez Perce uh, Pass. There, um, this is uh, this is still in pretty good shape.